In this interview, it's a continuing discussion about the platyball and the platypod. This is Twit. Hey folks, welcome back to This Week in Photo. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson. In this show, I'm speaking with two friends of mine, Ms. Hilmar Smith and Mr. Shiv Verma. They're two people that are industry sort of movers and shakers that are using that device that I talked to Larry about in that previous interview I did about Platypod. So they have, both of them are, uh, we're gonna find out what their affiliation is with the company, but more importantly, they know more about this thing than I do. So they've <laughs> they've agreed to come on and share their experiences with the, about the device, with the device, and uh, kind of what their overall perceptions of this direction of tripod heads is going. Hey guys, welcome to the show, how's it going? Hello. Good. Hello. So Hilmar, <laughs> I haven't seen you in forever. And whenever you come on, your 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 smile and the bright background and that mic that's as big <laughs> as your head just takes <laughs> takes over. <laughs> it takes over the show. So welcome to it's so good to have you on again. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. So let's start with you, Hilmar. So um introduce yourself. Where are you and what kind of photographer are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, it's been like a year and a half since the last time I was here. I know. It's all here. your fault. It's your fault. Um, <laughs> well, I'm a commercial compositing portrait photographer based in Orlando, Florida. Yes. There you go. There you go. That's the elevator speech. And she, Verma, you and I have known each other for several years as well, right? Oh, so yeah. What, uh, we give us your elevator pitch. Who are you and what do you shoot? The 007.5 of photography. <laughs> <laughs> Inside baseball, that's what I call uh, Steve because he's r always running around the planet and taking amazing photos, yeah. probably getting into precarious situations as well, right? That, that too, that too. But you know what? I mean, it's it's been so much fun. And I'll tell you, uh, the last trip, uh, the Platypod was my savior. So thank you, Platypod. There you go. Well, good. I want to talk about that. So first, let's start with, start with affiliation with the company. You guys are, are you influencers for the company or like what's your, what's your connection with Larry and Platypod? Well, I've been a Platypod ambassador for over two years already. Nice. Um, and I started uh, being more involved in the company a few months ago. Now I'm the one that is behind all Platypod social media. Nice. And I also collaborate with Skip Cohen when it comes to marketing mm -hmm. and ambassadors and, um, you know, making Platypod a little bit more social. Yes, yes. I've heard of that Skip Cohen guy. Yeah, I thought he was kind of a myth. I, I, I hear his name all the time, but I never see him. <laughs> so, Chief, what about you? What's your what's your involvement with the company? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's I got, the best I, I answer got, I, ever. <laughs> I got involved. I think I really got deeply involved with the original uh, Platy Pod. I mean, the the. The plate was not, it didn't even have enough holes in it back then. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the entire evolution, I've been sort of working with Larry. Uh, we've been, it, it's a strange, uh, it's a strange relationship. We have a set Tuesday morning phone call that we have to do. Otherwise, the week is incomplete. <laughs> um, we, therapy? We, is it a therapy session? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very therapeutic, <laughs> very therapeutic. But, but the real thing is, I mean, you know, we get to talk about, you know, what to do next with the product, uh, how to enhance it, how to make it better. Uh, you know, what are the features that somebody would would really want versus, you know, what is it just something that may be extraneous? Can we get rid of it? Uh, and then the whole process of actually deploying the product in the field and seeing how well it works, uh, testing it out and all that good stuff. So, you know, it's... it's uh, it's a double-edged thing. On one hand, it's uh, you know making sure the product does what it's supposed to, and on the other hand, is working closely with Larry to see what else we can do with it. So, yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it. So you you know looking at their Kickstarter, uh, it, it looks like it's not doing bad. Right? So <laughs> well, three hundred seventy-two thousand. Know. Almost three hundred seventy-four thousand of uh, an eighteen thousand dollar goal. Right. So. I mean, the market has kind of spoken on this thing. Is it, do, does your, both of the, Hilmar, I'll start with you. With, does your experience 
bear this out, you know, in terms of like, is, do you feel like it's worth, you're an influencer, so you're going to say yes, but give us, give us the inside truth. Like how do you, how are you using this device inside of well, your environment? This is the thing I've been, um, you know, I've been like following, uh, the whole process for a few years already. I think that the first time I saw the Platy Bowl, it was like about a year, a year and a half ago. And there have been changes and, and, you know, even the red one, um, uh, the color is a color that we picked for a picture of mine that I did for a campaign for Platypod. Oh, good. Okay. So yeah. I feel like, like, you know, like I, I have been so involved into the whole process. Um, what I love about the product is that it's completely different for, from any other uh, ball head out, out there. Um, one of my favorite features is um, I love to experiment with the platypod. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about the platypod is that you can put your camera in little corners where a tripod could not go. So I think a way that the platypod and the platypod complement each other is just like in the Elite, they has like that little screen. So you can turn it um, onto the front of the camera, put your camera on a platypod in a little corner, and then you can see in the screen if your camera is leveled and you can make any changes there, making sure that your picture is always going to be perfectly composed. So yeah. there's so many things um, just the way that you can take a panoramic uh, picture with with a platy with a platy ball, um, and and you know you're making sure that it's going to be all the way straight without having to make many changes um, on on post is something fabulous. So, um, you know what I want on that screen? I want to, I want blue. Tell Larry this. I want Bluetooth in that screen or in this device, and I want to be able to send <laughs> video so that I could see myself in that. As I'm composing my shot for like YouTube type videos and that, kind of <laughs> <laughs> put that on the list, Larry. If you're watching this, put it on the list. I need that. Well, cool. That's awesome. She, yeah. you, she, as you're running around the world and and doing the 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 fantastic landscape and nature shots that you do, how does this fit into that? And why, you know, when I, I'll, I'll be honest, when I first saw this device, I was thinking. I literally thought this is a this is a cure in search of a disease. That's what I thought, you know. And then when I looked deeper at it, and after speaking with Larry, I was like, "Oh, okay, this solves an itch I didn't know I had." Right? <laughs> so it is one of those <laughs> those things that yeah. that you know, it's like having back pain, and you don't really realize that you're in pain until it's gone. You're like, "Oh, this is what everyone else feels like," right? So. So what, what's your experience with it running around and, and doing the ty types of photography that you do? Um, in, in two simple words, absolutely fabulous. Nice. <laughs> so, I like those words. <laughs> yeah, let, let, me, let me just just step back a little bit. And uh, you know, if you talk about something being upside down and you know, people kind of look at you strange. And you know, that's what this tripod is. It's basically an upside down ball. But from from the actual usability point of view, uh, there, there's a couple of things that really make it exceptional. One is you don't need two hands to use this. So is it for all photographers? Yeah, it's for all photographers, but more so it's also for photographers who may have a little disability somewhere. Uh, you know, now, now they're not constrained to having to have both hands available. You can do everything with one hand. Yeah. Um, Visualize a pretty useless product it used to be. I mean, I don't know whether people still use it or not. There used to be a thing called a pistol grip. So actually, if you take a pistol grip and put a lot of steroids into it, uh, you get the first uh, incarnation of the platy ball. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really one-handed. You can use two fingers to uh, give it tension. Upper finger tightens it, lower finger loosens it and it's incremental because the the system is ratcheted so with each a push of the finger it clicks one ratchet stop and makes it just that little tighter or just that little looser and you're not you know fiddling with knobs and things like that it's all in one place uh, so that's that's really a feature that i love the second feature that is fabulous is the Arca Swiss compatible uh, mechanism to mount your camera. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can mount it vertical, horizontal, whichever way you want. But 
it too has a ratcheted lock mechanism. You actually have to push a button to release the ratchet and then you can loosen it to take your camera off. So the likelihood of the camera getting accidentally dislodged is uh, just not going to happen. Yeah. And then the, the real sort of kicker is the fact that since the ball head is upside down, when you're doing a panorama, you're not constrained about, you know, is my tripod level, is the base level? You level the ball, or the platy ball, and it's now level. I mean, you rotate it 360 degrees. Uh, there is no variance. I mean, maybe half a degree, as we say, that the accuracy of the leveling system is uh, to within a half degree. But a half degree is not going to ruin any kind of a panorama. Yeah. And then, and then if you are interested, take this platy ball and put it horizontal. Like you tip it down on its side like you would, you know, tip a camera if you didn't have an L-plate. And now you can do full vertical panoramas because it can rotate perfectly on axis in a vertical plane. So, so why, why would you use that? Why would you need the, the vertical orientation? Uh, so you, you probably heard the term vertorama. Yes, I have. Yeah, I've never used it. <laughs> it it's, not, it's got nothing to do with vertigo, all right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a vertorama, mm -hmm. where basically you take your camera like inside a building or, uh, you know, in a church or a, in any place. That, and you want to get uh, uh, the the full scope of where you are. So you want to get an image from the floor going up, you know, as, as an example, you're in a church, you want to get from the floor, go up to the altar and up. And then all these beautiful ceilings. I mean, most of these places of worship have the most gorgeous ceilings. And if you can incorporate that in a single, you know, vertorama, then why not do it? It's just another way of getting an image that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Yeah, no, that is fantastic. So that's uh, the, the other question that I threw at, at Larry in that previous interview was, you know, the, the, the tripods, the photographers typically have been known to travel around a lot, right? And, mm -hmm. and whether you're traveling or if you're studio based, weight is an issue, right? Because those days can get long and, you know, and every ounce counts, especially if you're backpacking, you know, somewhere that that extra ounce in a tripod counts. Hilmar, have the, the weight and the ergonomics of this thing, how they impacted you or, you know, made your work different or better? Well, um, my work is usually in studio, mm -hmm. right? So um, you're t when you talk about the platypod, uh, what the platypod has um, helped me to do is looking at my work in a different perspective. Now, when you bring um, the platypod into it, it's just another tool that I'm going to add to my um to my workflow yeah. just to just to make my art standing out uh, of what I was just doing. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Larry recently that I was doing this. Um, I have been obsessed about um, low um, angle portraits, and I have been seeing them lately a lot on fashion magazines. So what I do um, to create this is I just put my camera on the platypod on the platypod on the floor, and then have a model like just twirling. And you know, you can do that in a studio, or you can do it outdoors, and you get like the sky, the beautiful blue sky that you get in Florida at any any time of the year. So um, one of the things that um, is fantastic about um, using the platypod as well when when I'm doing this kind of photography is that when I put my camera on the floor on the platypod um, and I don't have anything like the platypod, um, just making sure that low when you put your, ca your camera vertically, um, just to make sure that the camera is straight when you are tilting right. is a very, you know, hard thing to do because you have to, you know, lay on the floor and whatever. Having a tool like the platypod um, when you have a screen that make you, you know, look that everything is perfectly um, angled and that you can just use your fingers just to release and tighten it up is something that, that you know, that you didn't know that you needed until you started using it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you, Hilmar, are you using the device as part of like a, 
like what tripod when you use a normal tripod, not the platypod, but are, do you use it mounted to like an Arca Swiss plate and then onto that camera? Or do you have it like when you're when you're testing with it, do you have it mounted directly to the tripod itself? Directly to the tripod. Okay. Okay. I've, I've, I've tested um, just a little bit the platyball, like right when I, when I, when I was in production. I yeah. haven't had um, the final product with me just yet because we're waiting for the for the final ones to be um, shipped to all of us, including, you know, as the ambassadors. I have the I have the honor to see it and to play with it a few times every time that we went to a conference and every time that, that you know, that I met with Larry um, and the whole platypod team. Uh, but when I'm not using, um, when I'm using a tripod, I just use a regular um, ball head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And Chief, what about you? Like, what's your, what's your, um, like in the, in the field, I guess what I'm getting at, like in the field where, where, like, let's, let's paint a picture, like a day in the life picture. So you're in Africa or you're traveling mm -hmm. around doing one of your workshops, right? And you're on an African savanna and you want to get a, a particular shot of some lions under a tree. Would you use this device or would you just go to, you know, a less capable device? Or a, tri would, or, uh, or a I, tripod I, without its Iron Man suit on? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <let> me, <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, carrying... Carrying weapons is a good thing, particularly in Africa, and this is a good weapon. I mean, it works. It's nice and it's not overly heavy, so you can swing it well. Um, but, but you know, visualize the problems that I've had, if you can visualize the problem, in carrying ball heads to places like Africa. Uh, you know, they, they are fidgety. They have knobs. They have protrusions, they have all kinds of crazy things. Uh, they don't slip into your bag and, and you know, uh, be well accommodated if you, when you want to pull it out. It's, so the, the nice thing about the platy ball is that, that there are no knobs, no extensions. It's just, you know, a slightly misshapen cylinder that goes into your bag very easily. But the other nice thing about it is that the base is actually uh, slotted. So you can hang the you know, ball head using a carabiner on your backpack. So you don't need, if you don't want to have to carry it in your bag, you can still carry it on your bag. So that's a great advantage. The, typically when, you, when you're traveling uh, to places like Africa, normally I'd take one tripod, one ball head. Well, now I take a tripod when I need it. I put typically one or two, uh, you know, platypods in my bag. And now once we have this in production, I will be carrying a platy ball. Uh, to give you an idea, my trip to Tanzania a few months ago, I had two platypods uh, strapped onto the arm of the left and the right side of the vehicle with a ball head on each. And I could just swing my camera from one position to the other. So the ease of, you know, the, the, maneuverability and, and the ease of photography was just absolutely exceptional. In the past, I'd have a tripod, it would be, you know, bungee corded and strapped to the handles and things of that sort. None of that anymore, because now you can operate from either side of the vehicle with uh, the utmost of convenience. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, well, cool. That is that is awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on one. So, Chief, you you're heading out to WPPI um, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow yeah. morning, and the mm -hmm. show is actually next week, right? It starts. Next That's week. right. Yeah. Right. So, what, so we go tomorrow, and then you know, uh, hopefully, get everything set up uh, for the show. And you know, getting boots set up does take a little bit of time, so that's what. <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah, just a little bit, yeah. just a little bit. And Hilmar, you're you're staying back in in beautiful uh -huh. sunny Florida, hanging out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not that sunny and it's not that hot today. It's super cold for us, which means that it's fifty degrees. Oh, poor you. <laughs> poor you. Well, hey, I'm in California, so whatever. It's very. It's always nice here. You want to nice come here. down here? It's kind of twelve degrees. You can keep it. You can keep that. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Well, cool, guys. Well, thank you both for coming on. Um, let's wrap this up. Hilmar, uh, I want to just talk a little bit about your work and some of the projects that you're working on. Give us the 
give us the the world of of Hillmar. You know what what happens on a on a weekly basis over there. It sounds like you're doing social media consulting. You're an influencer yeah. for multiple brands. I've I've heard you're shooting. You're posting on Instagram all the time. So what what's what's a peek into your world like? Oh my goodness. I have like, I always tell my kids that I have like five jobs, you know, besides being a mom, a full-time mom too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, I write for uh, Photoshop user magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, I do reviews for them and I have my own column. Then I do my things with Platypod and I have, um, I'm a Drobo ambassador. I am ambassador for Spiffy Gear. Um, I do commercial photography. I yeah. do branding commercial photography just for, you know, entrepreneurs and uh, personal branding. I do family. I do. You're <laughs> I busy. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. just with my little style. Um, and I think that 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 um, that's what I why I love doing what I do because I have been lucky just to build up my brand and build up my style. So um, I'm in the I'm in the time that whenever somebody contacts me and hire me, yes, they're hiring me for my personal style. And it's not just to do um, some kind of work that I wouldn't be happy doing. Yeah. So, yeah. And I would I would describe your personal style as very colorful and very, yeah. very, very illustrative. Like I, yeah. Yeah. I, I love yeah. it. It's I just it. Um, my goal has always been um, is just I want people whenever they look at my images just to feel some kind of happy, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I use a lot of colors and expression and, and you know, and I do a lot of fun compositing with kids and families and, and, and you know. And some strange lady, I see her in here a lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's part of my brand too, you know. Yeah, no, this, these are fantastic. It should be. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, right? Absolutely. Well, what's next for you? So, you, do you have any 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 plans that you can tell us about? I and mean, you always have something cooking. I am cooking something that is coming out um, in four days. Um, I've done some images that I'm pretty proud about, but I cannot tell anything just yet. Oh, come you on. Know, we won't tell anybody. Just of, tell us. Those kind of, no, I cannot. <laughs> I signed a contract. <laughs> like, no, no, I can't. Literally. Legally, I can't. Yeah, but the, yeah, but there are a lot of great things um, coming up. Good. and. I signed another amazing contract with a new commercial client for a project that I'm going to be doing for a year that I'm super excited about. So that is always something, you know, happening. And in in the um, world of, of Hilmar Smith, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming on to sharing this with us. Uh, this is, this oh, is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And i um, super thrilled, you know, for everybody to see the platyball and just, get to play with it and see what we're talking about and you know yeah. how this little tool can just completely change you know what we know about tribal heads yep yep i, I love it i love it and and she verma what about you man what's uh what's coming up for you and well, uh, I w- tell us I a little bit to, about I, the work that you're doing i want to first see if i can compress time because i want the platy ball and it's not going to be available till december mm-hmm. so that's that's the first thing compressed time uh, what's next? Um, interesting WPPI. And then I'm actually doing the TPS, which is the photography show in Birmingham, UK. Oh, cool. Uh, that's going to be next month. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a show that I've never done. It's so, amazing. I was there last year presenting and it's a really great show. Yeah. So that, that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and then, uh, I'll be coming down to your neck of the woods. I'll be in St. Augustine uh, thereafter. So oh. it's not it's not close to Orlando, but close enough. It's within yeah. Oh, it's close enough. We can even meet. Absolutely. It's just like an hour and a half or two hours, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys have so, to meet. That, that, that would be... Shiv, at this point, after mentioning it on, on TWIP... Uh, that would be rude if you guys don't meet. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, th- thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to. I mean, a, a fellow ambassador, yeah, you know, Pod, uh, 
expert and uh, promoter and you name it. I mean, Hilma, it would be a pleasure. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, you just, you just got to convince her to use Panasonic cameras after this. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Nikon Z7 girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, you know, it, it's kind of funny. I did a, did a podcast yesterday with Don Kamarechka. Mm-hmm. And uh, we talked about Nikon. Maybe, Hilma, you want to listen to that. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. All right. We'll have to, we'll have to listen or chat offline. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks, both of you guys. Shiv, tell, well, us, thanks, a little, Frederick. tell yeah. us about your work a little bit before we, before we hang up here. So, I mean, it's, nothing really has changed. I'm still doing, uh, you know, a lot of landscapes and mm -hmm. nature, wildlife stuff. Uh, the commercial product, uh, photography of all the glass and chromatography, etc., continues, but it's not as much as it used to be. So, with a little bit of uh, quote available time, I've just started a YouTube channel. Oh, so that's the seventh episode went up today, and uh, hopefully, you know, that can build up over time, and that's that's what I'm looking forward to. So, where what is your YouTube channel about? What do you talk about on there? Um, it's basically all about photography, as you would expect from me. So it's got things from educational stuff to, I just did the, the most recent one. Today's one is, um, uh, on using, uh, cross polarization in photography to get rid of specular highlights. So Very do do? good. So that's, that's today's topic. And then, you know, uh, I'm also kind of going to open it up to folks, uh, you know, asking for, you know, advice on how to, how do I do this? Or, you know, what do I do to make an image like this? Uh, I'm not going to go into compositing and a lot of editing. I'll leave that to Helma to do. Um, <laughs> I'll take care of how do you get there? And then she can take care of fixing it. <laughs> so it's, it's a tutorial. So you're, you're taking a topic like every week or so. And then, you know, like in this case, looking at this shot, what are you, what are you talking about here? Well, this is the one I'm talking about uh, where uh, you're using cross polarization, because when you have objects like, you know, water droplets or you have uh, crystals that have a lot of specular highlights when you light them, uh, you can't get rid of that specular highlight. The only way to do it is through editing. And when you edit, uh, you're cloning from areas that are not necessarily going to be replicas of what you're cloning to. Mm -hmm. So the only way to do it is to actually eliminate the specular highlights. So basically, you use polarized light rather than normal light on the subject to light it. And then you use a polarizer on your camera to cross polarize and thereby eliminate all the um, specular highlights. Oh, that's interesting. I never, I never thought about using polarized light. Uh, when I think mm -hmm. about polarization, I always think about the you know, the other side of it, the, the right. polarizing or, or taking the polarization off the light that's coming into the camera. Correct. So if you can orient your light or polarize it before it hits the subject, the likelihood of it getting multidirectional and thereby causing specularity uh, gets reduced. And now if you can then further polarize it, you eliminate the reflective nature of the object completely. Look at that. See, uh, like I said, James Bond. Yeah. This is James, <laughs> this is James Bond. No, what, was the, what was the name of the guy? Uh, you know, James Bond's guy who invented all the stuff for Q. him. Q. Come on. Q. That was yes. Q. Come on. Yes. So you're, but you're Q that gets to go out in the field and play with the stuff that he invents. So I, I'm, I'm the Q with the 007 attached to it. Yeah. 007 <laughs> Q. As you're, as you're, get a t-shirt, 007 Q. Well, cool. Well, thank you both for coming on. I appreciate it. And Jeeve, Jeeve, don't don't think I didn't notice within that shot on your YouTube channel, I saw a platypod in there. So yes, yes, you, always. You, you eat your own dog food here. So I absolutely, love that. Yep. yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, it's funny, Frederick. You talk about a product that I have two platypod maxes in my camera bag and two platypod ultras that go everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and and now with the goosenecks. I mean, I can, I, I carry four goosenecks with me so I can light things. I can, you know, use them to hold things. Uh, it's just, you know, it's taken the place of so many other gadgets that I used to have to carry. And I just carry these now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, it's that's, the same for me. Um, I used to, whenever I was um, 
shooting with a DSLR. I never took the camera with me whenever I was out with my kids. And since I moved to um, uh, mirrorless, now I take my camera with me all the time, especially when I go to the Disney parks with my kids just to make memories. And I always make sure that I have a platypod with me. Yeah. And it's funny because nothing stopped more public in Disney than using my platypod. Like yeah. just whenever I strap it on a rail and I take pictures of my kids with myself and whatever, there is always at least two people just stopping by asking me yeah. what I'm doing and what is this. Interesting. And which one is that you're holding up right now? This is the Ultra. That is the Ultra. Okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. Very cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you both for coming on. Uh, this has been a great show. Um, I feel like I know more about the platypod and the platyball. And uh, again, I'll reiterate, when I first saw that platyball, I was thinking, you know, who's this for? And now I know who it's for. And now I want one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you found one. your itch. Now you need to cure it. Now I need to, I need to scratch it. Yeah. So that's it. That's yeah. the, the platyball cortisone cream of the industry. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. You both of you individually need to come back on the show and do some do a one on one catch up because it's been it's been way too long. So okay. that, that, all right. So, to do that. Take care, Frederick. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you later. This is Twitter.